On this episode of Global Topic, I'll have a conversation with Mike Goodfriend, who's a teamwork engineer, leadership coach, and author with Goodfriend and Associates. Mike and I will have our third conversation on how to get into the tank with the sharks and make your case. Hey, Mike, welcome back to Global Topic. Thanks, Jim. I'm looking forward to it again. This is going to be our, our third episode. Uh, so uh, let me ask you this question. You know, where do I start in making a case for a business opportunity? Well, um, business opportunities are, are probably the key to driving innovation in reality because we often have great ideas, but actually driving them to be adopted is, is key. So being able to to start making the case for a business opportunity. You know, I've always liked the expression, Jim, a thousand mile journey begins with the first step. So I'm, I'm going to tell you that I think the first step when it comes to making compelling business cases is to watch the TV show Shark Tank. It's actually better education around making compelling business cases than you could get at Harvard. And it's absolutely free. So that, that that's uh, one recommendation I would make, you know, in the show, People have to, to make their, their, they have to communicate their business opportunity immediately and clearly and concisely to the sharks. So if you watch the show, you see that they all come with that lead in. They're ready to go. They, they have to be able to define what it is that that opportunity is, whether it's a product or a solution or a, a technology. And, and they have to be able to define the value proposition that makes uh, thing the you know their proposal compelling, but probably the biggest thing that I've always observed, not just from from Shark Tank, but from people making compelling business cases, is that the real secret to a great start is to tell your story for your business opportunity. It's one that has your motivations, your experiences, and your aspirations. So. Those are some, some steps that I think are really, really important. I, I, a couple other quick things is you really have to think about the market um, and what your advantage will be. And to be able to communicate that up front, um, what is, the, you know, what's the need that you're serving? Not a need that you're trying to create. What's the, the existing need that's out there that you're trying to serve with that, that innovation-based business opportunity? Yeah, very good points there. So, you know, who do I need to convince? Yeah, um, one thing I like to say, Jim, is that in innovation is just an idea until you have a buyer, you know, like a shark. So for many, that shark might be an executive within the organization that you work for. And uh, it, some other people, it might be a client or investor. So, um I do like the idea of, you know, this idea of swimming with the sharks, you know, if you're going to swim with the sharks, you, you really do have to, to be on your game and it accelerates in many ways um, that business opportunity, if you can, can take it to the sharks. So I'm, I'm a leadership coach and a team developer. So I saw the shark tank approach as a great way for individuals, uh, both leaders as well as teams to learn and develop. So I, I, I've shared in previous episodes that I developed this Teamwork Sharks Leadership Challenge. And it's a, you know, just a, as a refresher, it's a six month leadership program. The first four months are about building leadership capabilities, including some of the skills that we talked about last time around exploring business opportunities and being a disruption advocate. The last two months though, Jim, is where the participants have to explore business opportunities and make a compelling case to myself and another shark in a one day event, both in front of their peers, um, the sharks and the executives. So they're 
the experience of preparing and delivering their pitch to persuade multiple stakeholders is the way I, I call it a first in a lifetime experience for many. And, but learning how to, do, to make that compelling business case, both in writing and verbally, is a key skill to having more influence in an organization. So, uh, and just to, to give you a little bit of background. So uh, in the program, we actually award the Teamwork Sharks Tooth Award to the participant who makes the most compelling case. And these are actual opportunities then that are either approved by the executives to go forward or not. Um, and just, you know, as it relates to the industry, I've done this, uh, uh, some of the stat, the, the NACE um, staff directors and managers have actually participated in this program and they've come up with innovation-based uh, business opportunities for things like uh, process automation, new offerings for members, virtual conferences, um, helping members become more visible. So uh, it's, it's uh, putting yourself, I, you know, being able to make your case to stakeholders is a, a, a really key skill. You know, who knows, maybe one day I'll be able to persuade the AMP leaders to, to let me offer this to um, uh, AMP members at, at some point. So that, that making the case to stakeholders is a great learning opportunity. Well, the teamwork shark sounds amazing and I'm a very competitive person. So I want to win that compelling case. So <laughs> you got to help, you got to help me out here. How do I make a case compelling, Mike? Yeah. Well, first of all, this is a very interesting part of the program. So part of the program, you know, most of the time when I do this program, it's inside an organization or people who have a common focus. Um, and, you know, so, um, it's actually a, a, a one of the, in many ways you're competing, but in other ways you're actually collaborating because those peers going through the program are going through the same thing you are. And so it's really, uh, you can actually help each other out and in essence, you know, a rising tide, you know, uh, you know, uh, helps float all boats, you know, or, or helps rise all boats, I guess you might say. So, um, so making a compelling, compelling case, I think, starts when we were, when we were children. And, you know, we're trying to make a case about getting a new toy or being able to hang out with our friend, you know, before doing our homework. And, and uh, those of us who are parents, we, we have to deal with those compelling uh, cases sometimes as well. So in making a case, I would say it's the sizzle that sells um, for the steak. And in this case, I mean, steak, like in stakeholder. So it is the sizzle though. And so we have to be able to um, make a case with some sizzle to it. Yes, it needs to have, um, a, 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 it needs to be a unique solution with a strong financial model, with, uh, with a strong return on investment. And we need to be able to address the possible resistance and showstopper risks. So those are all things that are important, but we need to be able to tell the story. So I'll just, um, uh, I'll sh share a little bit of my story with this. So when I first started the Teamwork Sharks, I decided that I wanted to tell the story of the Teamwork Sharks approach through a book. So uh, at first I thought I could do one of these standard business books that have a model that highlights the key steps of making compelling cases. And I started to write it. And to be honest, Jim, I was bored. Uh, I was bored writing it. So you can imagine what it was like, it would have been like for the readers. So I kind of scrapped that. And one day I was flipping cable channels and I saw the movie Back to the Future. And, I, and it triggered my book idea because I've always been interested in the, you know, the, the concept of time travel. And so I ended up writing my book, it's called Breakthrough Time. And it's a business novel that took place in 2016. And my grandchildren who were actually in their fifties, you know, about my age at the time came back from the year 2085 to get me and my Teamwork Sharks colleague to come to the future and help their company commercialize a revolutionary business opportunity, time travel. So, it was, it was fun to write, 
but it, uh, it told the story of the approach. And I also got, it was a personal story. I got, uh, I got to meet my grown grandchildren that didn't exist in 2016, still don't exist. And just as important, I got to see my son um, who was 88 in the book. And I was able to share some views on where I thought technology and sports in the future um, were, were gonna look like. But more importantly, it was a great, the story was a great way um, to talk about the value of the teamwork sharks and how an organization can drive innovation through making compelling cases by understanding what stakeholders are looking for and how sharks and uh, other stakeholders decide on a business opportunity. And it's kind of what I call the difference makers. Very interesting. I like that. The book mm. that, that, that's a great, uh, great way of really. Yeah, we can. I, I would love to be able to provide the link to you. Uh, um, that maybe you can can uh, uh, show on screen as well. Yeah, no problem. That's that's pretty cool. That's a, that's a great way to kind of you know bring a lot of the concepts and ideas together and, and kind of make it interesting. Like you said, you know, sometimes these business books are they can be a little dry. They can be a little you know not not real exciting. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like you put the sizzle as you said earlier into that. Uh, into the concepts and thoughts and everything like that. So, mm -hmm. so let me ask you this, Mike, you know, in your experience as a teamwork shark, what are the difference makers? Yeah. Okay. I, I think of three of them. Uh, the first one is business opportunities that are big, you know, big always catches someone's attention. It could be big in terms of, of the return on investment or, uh, you know, the financial model on, on what it's going to be. Um, and it could be, be uh, big in terms of its impacts um, in, as well. So one nice leader in the program was um, Kim Ray, who's now the AMP director of pre-professional and young professional programs. And so she won the uh, Teamwork Sharks Tooth Award. And she, this is the way, you know, I, I asked her uh, recently, uh, about what she learned about making a compelling business case. And, and, and she, she said, creating a compelling business case encouraged me to think bigger and thinking about the larger efforts of the association and our mission led me to an opportunity that will provide new services to our members and customers, create relevant continuing education opportunities and to ensure certificate holders were educated on the most recent technologies. She said, big ideas are great, but the details need to back it up. So uh, big is one of the, the factors. A another difference maker is a business case that is strategic. So one where there really is a need in the market and will help your organization gain an advantage in the market. And based on where the organization is at the time, it, it might be something new, um, but it also might just be something that, is needed um, to, to, to really gain that advantage. So Cindy O'Malley, who's now the uh, COO of, of AMP and executive director of the AMP Global Center, won the 2020 Teamwork Sharks Tooth Award. And she said that making her compelling business case really helped her think more strategically. And she identified a, a real strategic opportunity that, um, uh, uh, that allowed her to broaden her perspective uh, across the business. And the third difference maker, I would say, is one that business cases need to have a high probability of being achieved. And so I, as a, you know, I'm kind of like the shark or one of the sharks on Shark Tank. And my job is to ask tough questions to see whether the, the business opportunity and the leader uh, who wants to to, to lead this business opportunity, whether it'll be resilient enough to worth investing in. So there's some business opportunities that I, I couldn't support because the leader really didn't think through the practical execution risks and the potential resistance that could de derail the success of the pro proposal. So being able to make the case on, on a high probability of it being achieved is, is uh, you know, another one of the difference makers. Very good. Very good. You know, what a, another great conversation we've had here, Mike. 
in, in closing out this episode, is there anything that we did not cover that you would want to leave with the viewers? Well, yeah, I just um, want to want to reiterate something I think I said in the beginning is, uh, you know, last our last discussion, uh, last episode focused on exploring for business opportunities, but being able to make the case, uh, an effective case is the real test for the viability of an opportunity. A lot of people have ideas. Some never act on, on those ideas and regret it later. But, but if, if, and part of that is being able to make a strong case, if you have an idea, being able to take on that challenge of making a compelling business case um, is, is the real test, not only for your own growth and development, but to, to actually have influence. So being able to make that case to the sharks in your organization is, is something that it is a great step in, in your growth and development as a leader. Well, I can say if you want to survive the sharks and swim with the sharks, you better listen to what Mike's telling everybody here. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Uh, no problem. What I'll do is I'll also uh, put a link to the previous two episodes so we can bridge everything together. And then, uh, Mike, we have one more episode to do, and then I will make a complete playlist and uh, promote that playlist out uh, to uh, to my subscribers and also uh, post that on LinkedIn as well so people can get the uh, full um, really the full value of all four episodes. Um, I also put a link, um, to, uh, contact, uh, Mike and also to his uh, website. You can learn a little bit more about uh, what Mike does and also to the programs and the coaching and everything like that. So Mike, thank you so much for this opportunity to have a, uh, another conversation with you. Thank you again, Jim. Hey, have a great day. You too.